Why does it take so long for us to get updates for our smartphones? Could it be carrier subsidies? That's our topic on this week's Android Guy Weekly. In the United States, when you want to go and get a cell phone, you typically find what provider you want, and then you find out what phones they have, and you sign up for a contract. That contract is usually two years, sometimes more, sometimes less, but two years is pretty average, and you get a discount on a phone when you do that. Now, the discount is really a subsidy, and that discount can be anywhere from you know, a few bucks to a few hundred bucks, and you get the latest and greatest phone for sometimes half price of what you can get it if you bought it unlocked or unsubsidized. And that sounds like a good deal until you start looking at what you're really getting. First of all, you are getting tied into that contract. You have an early termination fee that you have to pay to get out of the contract, which is usually a couple hundred bucks. You know, the amount that you saved when you bought the phone subsidized. It sounds a little convenient, doesn't it? But you're also losing out on you know, some other stuff that really isn't all that obvious. First of all, you've got the price that you play, pay for your plan. You're probably paying too much there. Look at our friends over across the pond. They pick out the phone they want, then they pick the plan they want, and they put the two together, and if they decide that's not the plan for them, they go out and get a new plan. It doesn't cost them early term fees. Now, of course, they don't usually get a subsidized phone when they do that. They get a full-priced phone, and then they get the plan at a lower rate, and that's how over the course of however long that phone works for them, that's how much money they save. But that's something interesting, okay? How long can you use a phone? Well, I've got a Nexus One that's still in perfect working condition. It's got some battle scars, but it works great. I've got an Epic 4G. I've got a G2. All these phones, they're not that old, and they still work great. So why, why don't I use them daily? Why do I have a, a brand new phone? Why do I have this Galaxy Nexus in my hand? Well, they don't have a new operating system. Let me come back to that. Subsidies. I'm not the only one who's kind of thinking that subsidies aren't all that great for you. And you'll be surprised who had this kind of radical idea. Let me read it to you first, and then I'll tell you who it was. Uh, at a, a conference, or a summit rather, this guy said the following. Device subsidies actually distorts what devices actually cost. And it causes OEMs, carriers, everybody to compete on different playing fields. I think it's really difficult, especially from a consumer perspective, because it causes consumers to devalue completely the hardware they're using. See, it's not a phone anymore. It's just a contract extension device. So let's go back to this. It's amazing hardware, but it has become kind of throwaway. So it's unfortunate you've got dual core multiprocessor devices with amazing HD screens that get thrown away at 18 months. So who said that? It was T-Mobile's Chief Marketing Officer, Cole Broadman. Wow, that's a big player. So why do we throw our phones away in 18 months? Is it because they're broken? It might be. Some of the phones that I've seen get broken relatively easily. In fact, I have one coworker that has gone through so many of her phones that it's just ridiculous. She decided to go to an entirely different phone this time around. Same manufacturer, ironically, but that phone kind of had the, uh, and I'm not going to tell you which one because I think, I'm hoping that hers was an isolated incident, but it had kind of a, uh, a false impression, I hope it was false, that it was cheaply made, which is sad because it was a flagship device. I mean, it was one of the four major devices that this manufacturer made for the different carriers, and it was supposed to be, wow, look how great we are, but it was kind of cheap and it had some problems with construction. Why? Why would a manufacturer do that and possibly tarnish their reputation as a manufacturer, you know, when that phone breaks, well, I'm not getting one from them again, their last one sucked, right? Why would they do that? Because the OEMs, or rather the, the carriers, want the OEMs to make specific hardware at a specific price in a specific time frame. So that's one thing, you know, they're not gonna put a lot of quality into it because they don't have to last that long. They've only got to last 12, 18 months, and then you're gonna be buying a new one anyway, right? Right, okay, so that's hardware. And 
for the most part, manufacturers make good hardware. Software now. How many updates do you get on your desktop computer? Whether that be Linux or Apple or Microsoft. It comes somewhat frequently. You know, every few weeks it seems. How often do you get them on your phone? Not that often. Why? It's not because there aren't bugs. It's not because there aren't ways that they can enhance or, or make things better. It's because it's got to go through all of these different layers, both at the OEM and the carrier, before it gets pushed down to your phone. And sometimes that can take half a year to do which is really bad if it's like a zero day exploit that they really need to patch up really quick. You're not gonna get that because of all of this bureaucracy. So bureaucracy is one thing, but also what about new operating systems? I just installed Ice Cream Sandwich on that Epic 4G. Ice Cream Sandwich, and it's pretty darn good. It seems nearly feature complete as far as what I use for daily operation. And it, it's amazing, it works just fine. It's not as fast as you know on a multi-core processor, but it works. It works every bit as good as the version that came on it. So why isn't Samsung saying, hey, let's get Ice Cream Sandwich on this phone today, because it can be done. Why aren't they putting all of their effort behind that? Because we're not the customer. The carrier is their customer. And their carrier, I believe, doesn't want that. Instead, they want you to say to, to get the message, oh, we, we're gonna get updates for these phones, it's just gonna take a little time for our quality to make sure it works well on our network. Because it's the network that's important. We don't wanna release something that's gonna hurt everybody else on our network. You know, just because you want it doesn't mean everybody else does. And, and if, the, you know, if the situation were reversed, you, you'd want the same thing. See how nice we're being by protecting our network. It's all about the network. Okay, whatever. Serious guys, if you've got a problem with the device, turn it off. You've got that option. Flip the switch right there on the panel. Anyway, way off topic. They don't necessarily want to update that device because they've already got a new device that they have in the channel. They're working on it and it's gonna be out in the next six months with the latest operating system on it. And hey, yeah, we're working on that one and it'll be out by the end of the year. So hang on with us, don't worry, we'll, we'll get it to you. And then, oh hey, did you know that now you can get a brand new phone that's got a dual core or ooh, even a quad core processor, double the RAM, super fast, and it comes with that operating system already built on it? Sweet, in fact, you know what? We'll even buy back your own device, your old device, and give you 50 bucks. We'll then sign you up for another two-year contract, subsidize it, and you're looking at 150 bucks and you can get a brand new phone. Well, who wouldn't want to do that? Except, okay, two problems. One, now you're in another two-year contract. You just pay, paid another 150 bucks that you didn't have to, plus all the stuff that you're going to be paying for the next two years. But that phone that they bought back from you, do you think they were doing you a favor? I don't think so. See, what you could have done with that phone is hacked it, put CyanogenMod or some other ROM on it and hey, have the latest and greatest thing now. Or sold it to a friend, probably for that same 50 bucks, maybe a little bit more even, who'd then hack it and have the latest and greatest on that device. And now, holy crap, they might have a newer operating system on your old phone than you have on your new phone because they were more tech savvy. You know, somebody like me, and hopefully like a lot of you guys, were able to add extended life to that device beyond what the manufacturer had originally intended, beyond what the carrier had originally intended. They don't like that because that's not getting new devices in your hands and that's not getting new contracts under their belt. Okay, sounds like a big conspiracy theory. That's my take on it. Now it's your turn. That comment box down below, let me know, am I off my rocker? Or does this sound logical? Does it make sense? Have you experienced the same thing? Or maybe you've got an entirely different theory on why subsidies exist and if they're good or bad, something that I missed here. Please let us know that down below. Of course, we want to get as many people participating here as possible, so make sure you thumbs up the video so that all of your friends know about it, that you liked this format, that you liked being able to participate in this so that we can get their opinions here as well and make this conversation even bigger even better. So that's it for this week. Subsidies, comment down below. Of course, subscribe to the video channel so you don't miss next week's episode. If you've got a recommendation on what that should be, go ahead and fire that over to me. Just contact me through pocketnow.com. 
for PocketNow.com and the Android Guy Weekly, I'm Joe Levi.